another day, another conversation yeah. on culture and ethnicity in Scotland. Yeah, in Scotland. Scotland. Can you imagine yeah. Scotland? We can now talk about it more confidently. I've waited for this for a long time. I've waited for this for a long time. And, and, and in a way, it feels so good. It does. It feels... Uh, the, these, these a weight off the shoulder. It's, it really feels like a new day. Yeah, because it feels now, like a new day. now it's not just us talking about it. Mm. You know, sometimes you go places and you talk about it and you're like, should I have said that? Yeah. But now everybody is talking about it and it's more of a societal issue That's right. than it is an issue about just me, just you, just us black people. Mm. Now it's a societal issue, it's yeah. a societal discussion. Yeah. We're recognizing it as not just a black people's problem. Which, which, which brings a lot of comfort. It does. Now I understand that not everyone that is shouting and talking about it is maybe going to do something, but we hope. We yeah. hope that yeah. something can be done. Yeah. Um, but the fact that everyone, especially the young generation, mm. is involved yeah. um, and they are keen to see that difference. <laughs> there are hope, aren't Ooh, they? Ooh, there are hope. <laughs> yeah. um, and so that in itself gives, you know, there's that sense of, um, um, I was saying to you that uh, for some reason, even when you're out on the streets, mm. you feel a sense of belonging. Yes. Uh, which wasn't, which is, which is quite um, challenging and quite um, not a good thing to say because, you know, sometimes you think that because you're in a place, therefore you belong. Yeah. But this time it's, it's a different thing, it's a different feeling. Yeah. When you go out now, you feel that sense of belonging, yeah. which is a very, very good thing. Because there is a recognition of the challenges that we have experienced over the years, yeah. which hasn't been the case. Again, the conversation has gone from, oh, we don't understand what you're talking about, to... We want to. We want to understand. Yes, you yes. Know? We know we don't understand, but how can we understand? Mm. It's completely shifted the rhetoric from, I don't get you, yeah. to, I want to get you. That's correct, yeah. Yeah. Which is a very good thing. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So today we're talking about... Solutions. Uh, solutions. Yeah. Actions that people can take individually, as a community, uh, but also co collectively. This is really a collective issue. That's correct. So yeah. we should deal with it collectively. Yes, yes. So, as an individual, um, there are things that you can do. First mm. of all, you can educate yourself. Yes, yeah. yeah. And I think that is very key. Um, mm. As an individual, I think sometimes when we are um, experiencing these challenges around racism, mm. it's, it feels it's a lone place. Yes. And, in, and often when you try to highlight and bring up these issues, mm. it's like, what are you talking about? Yeah. It seems like no one understands what you're saying. Mm. They don't understand your language. Mm. They don't understand your issues. Mm. And therefore, you're left out to dry. Yes. But when someone comes up and expresses and, exp um, their, and shares their experiences yes. with you, yes. I think it's as an individual basis, mm. I think it's in important for that person to be supported during that time. Yes. I remember when we first came and we, were still, uh, and we were still new to Scotland, I think it was in the first two years, mm -hmm. and we were struggling with the idea of, you know, of immigration and we didn't really understand. And it was very, very difficult that time when we were not allowed to work or, yeah. you know, any recourse to public funds. Mm -hmm. And I remember, because you internalize it. Yes, yeah. And you believe that you are the problem. So you, once you've believed that, I remember I thought, uh, what, maybe maybe this is not really something that we are not supposed to be here. Mm. It's my fault anyway. Why did I come here? Obviously, you don't think when somebody comes to your country, you embrace them. You're just thinking, I'm not accepted, but you accept it. And I remember the first time I got asked, um, so you're not allowed to work? No. You're not allowed to claim benefits? No. So how are you expected to leave? I said, well, that's just the situation. Mm. And we'd accepted it. Yeah. Mm. But we had so many people saying to us, mm. this is unacceptable. That's correct. It's inhumane. Yeah. And, and that, that made a difference. Yes. That made a difference. Yes. Yeah. Because then 
it allowed you to open up more. Yes. But also it allowed you to realize that I'm not wrong. Yes. Um, maybe there's a problem somewhere. The system is the problem, not yes. necessarily you. That's right. Yeah. 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 It validates you as a person almost. Mm. It humanizes you mm. and doesn't problematize you. Yeah. And I think this is the thing. When we, Again, when we started sharing our own story, nobody else was doing it. That's right. And yeah. it felt quite uncomfortable. Mm. But we didn't even start sharing it willingly. No. It was no. because people were asking. That's right, yeah. I remember yeah. the first time somebody asked, so, uh, are you an asylum seeker? No. Are you a student? No. What are you? And you're thinking, ah, um, um, undocumented? Yeah. What? Yeah. And I think the thing is, when somebody asks you over a period of time, you start to think, why are they asking me? That's right. But I think it's not always the case that people want to be asked. And I don't think I was comfortable being asked, but having that conversation of a real life experience, yeah. I think educates people and gets people to understand this yeah. situation. So first, you need to educate yourself. And therefore, this, this uh, excuse that people make on individual uh, grounds, mm. where they say, oh, we don't understand, mm. or it's, it's, it's uncomfortable. Mm. You know what? Me sharing my story and my experience is very uncomfortable. By the way, it is. It's very, very uncomfortable. It is. So it's uncomfortable on both sides. Yeah. It's not just uncomfortable on one side. Yes. So it's, we should get into this space where we understand that as much as it's not uncomfortable for you, it's not un uncomfortable. It's, it's, not, uncomfortable. it's un uncomfortable for me as well. Yeah, that's true because I remember um, the first time we started talking to the kids about this, about racism, our youngest was nine, but we'd be even forced into it because you start to think we'd, we'd protected them from it. We didn't want them to know anything. We didn't want them to know about the immigration situation. Mm -hmm. But you get to a stage where um, you are experiencing racism mm -hmm. and you can't keep quiet anymore. Mm -hmm. So we decided we were going to talk about it and our oldest was 12 at the time. Mm -hmm. But I remember that discomfort of thinking, what, what are we, we teaching say? our children? Yeah. Mm -hmm. How do we even teach them? Yeah. And when they are young, it's harder. Yeah. But I think when you talk about it honestly, and you have a conversation, of course age appropriate, mm -hmm. it allows for children to understand it from a perspective of what it really is. Mm -hmm. So there are books, uh, there are blogs, mm -hmm. uh, there is on TV everywhere. Mm -hmm. So take the time to educate yourself. Mm -hmm. But also I want us to think, as an individual, apart from educating yourself, it's important that particularly if you were in the privileged majority, mm -hmm. you have the opportunity to mm -hmm. speak up yeah. and support somebody That's correct, who yeah. is not. Yeah. Like I just said, it was people that un had our story, thought it was unfair, yeah. that started to talk to us, that made us feel that we were not the problem, but also helped us to come through it. Actually, uh, again, going back to our experience, mm. it was, it took a person, an individual, to come to us and say, let me look at your case. Yes. And then referred us to a solicitor That's that took, us, took up our, our case. Yes. So, as an individual, again, it's not just about talking and educating yourself, but mm. actually, when you realize in your organization, in your company, in your community, mm. when you see these issues, it's, it's okay for you to ask those questions. Yes. You know, how come we don't have any black person on our board? Yes. Or how come we don't have any black person mm. in our workplace? Mm. Um, and if as much as we want to get involved and as as we continue to address these issues, mm. if, if individuals come up and mm. ask those questions, mm. that is what is going to create the change. That but is what's going, going to bring the, the difference. Yeah, and we must highlight that not everybody likes to be asked the questions. Yes. Yeah. But if you create that relationship with somebody, mm. they might then that space will be created. Mm. And that mm. says so. We've gone from individually, but now as an organization, mm. you've already mentioned that create those spaces. Mm. See, sometimes in the organizations, that space is not there. It's not. It's not. And often, 
when it comes to diversity or when it comes to race issues, these things are, 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 are done in isolation. Yes. But I think as an organization, we need to bring that into the organization mm -hmm. and these things need to be embedded mm -hmm. in our systems and processes. Mm -hmm. um, this is not something to be done in isolation. Mm -hmm. This is something that is going to be embedded in the company policies. Yes. Um, and so if anything comes up around racism, mm -hmm. the whole company has got to yes. address it. Yes. Um, when it comes to uh, talking about diversity and equality and all those, it's not a, a small project on the side. Yes. It's something that the organization embraces mm -hmm. and takes on as a whole. I was smiling there when you were talking because I was just thinking about we do this, uh, when we do this diversity um, um, maybe awards in an organization <laughs> and suddenly you know you go and you turn up and and they're like oh this is our diversity you know this is the champion for diversity yeah. and it's a fantastic white person yes uh, and it's another <laughs> person that has worked so hard in yes. diversity and it's in promoting diversity yeah and they're like Hang on a minute, what is going on here? You know, <laughs> diversity of thought. Yeah. But well, what is that? What is diversity of thought? What is diver diversity, of th diversity of thought? As if it doesn't come from having different experiences yeah. and being of different cultures. Mm. Anyway, yeah, so that uh, we can do training as well mm. uh, as an organization, yeah. and that training needs to be proper good training yes training that takes you through understanding critical awareness reflection yes but also i think when it comes to the training mm -hmm. it's also getting training with lived experience uh yeah. people yes uh, because i think when normally when we talk about the training it, you know, organizations think it's a 30 minutes yes. thing yes. and therefore they get in touch with you and say can you come in in our lunch break <laughs> uh, to do the diversity training, yes. uh, the lunch break is going to be an hour or thirty minutes. Yes. And how effective is that going to be? It's not going to be. Effective. Um, so if we are going to deal with this mm. and have good results out of it, mm. we need to invest the time. We need to invest the money. Basically, the organization has to be ready for diversity. Exactly. Has to be ready to address these things. Yes. We all have policies. Yes. Everybody has uh, has a diversity and uh, and equality uh, something on their shelf. Mm. But these policies have to really be embedded, and you can do that through training. You can create yeah. spaces mm. where you have those conversations That's in correct, the workplace. Yeah. Mm. You can support other uh, people that are going through it in your workplace. Mm -hmm. Because again, as we say, this is going to need to be a collective issue. That's right. But yeah. then it also they say charity starts at home. Mm. What about as a community? Mm. You know, you mm. it's not necessarily organization, yes. yeah. but as a community. As a community, again, I think is having those conversations okay. now, right now because of the pandemic. Mm. It's given us an opportunity to stay at home, mm. uh, which is not again com comfortable, mm. but it's created that time for us to discuss and do deal with issues at home. Mm. So I think as a community, let us start having those conversations yes. at home. Yes. Because it's out of the home mm. that we can go to the communities yes. and become effective. Yes. So if we start having those conversations at home, mm. by the time we start to engage with the communities, mm. we already have something to talk about. That's right. Um, so That's we, right. we, as, as a community, I think we need to, first of all, have those honest, honest conversations. That's at home. Key. That's the key because research has been done that shows that children by the age of five, mm -hmm. they, nobody's born racist, no. but by the age of five, mm -hmm. they've formed some understanding on yeah. these issues. Yeah. And because they don't see, uh, say for example, for our children that have, you know, our son was in school for a whole decade yeah. without ever having another black child in his class. And then out of that... And no black teacher. Exactly. <laughs> and then you expect that child to grow up and become a teacher yes. when they have never seen that. Exactly. How can exactly. they become what they don't see? Yeah. And we often talk about this and again when we talk about it we leave it hanging. Yeah. But let us do something different. Yes. And I think this has created an opportunity yeah. for us as individuals, as organizations, mm. but also as a community to do something different. Absolutely. Let us seize this moment to do Absolutely. something different. Absolutely. Mm. And I think on that note, we're just going to say 
thank you for watching today and we hope that you can do something and that you're going to go away with some 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 tips on what to do mm. remember please give us a like and subscribe to our channel for more on culture and ethnicity